Well, happy Saturday, folks. It's the real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza here in downtown Bethlehem. It's the 20th of April. Thought we'd talk volcanoes here quick because there's been a, a big one, another big one here. So this uh, Ruang, Indonesia volcano, uh, again, more northern hemisphere. So again, near the equator, but in the northern hemisphere here, uh, pumping out a ton of SO2, uh, sulfuric uh, acid, basically. If you pump that high enough in the atmosphere, like Mount Pinatubo did back in 1991, you can create a major global cooling effect, as we had with Pinatubo back in the early 90s. Um, so we'll see. This one's got to pump it up pretty high, but it is in the northern hemisphere, and that means it's more likely to um, have an influence in the northern hemisphere. Versus Tonga, last in uh, January 2022, blew up in the uh, an oceanic volcano, which actually put a ton more water vapor, uh, as opposed, you know, ocean basically, as opposed to SO2. It did some SO2, uh, which created six to 10 year cooling trends in 2022 across Australia, South Africa, parts of uh, Argentina. So again, they had been in coolest in six to 10 years because of that volcano. And then the whole world's had uh, just epic rainfall here because of that, because we just pumped up a ton of water vapor in the atmosphere. And that'll probably be stuck up there uh, for five to maybe 10 years uh, since 2022. The big one was Pinatubo back in 1991, um, similar in terms of magnitude of Tonga. Uh, but the difference there is that was a land-based volcano, so it didn't put a ton of water vapor, but again, more SO2, which again created the global cooling effect. So we'll have to watch the Ruang because it's the, doing a little bit of both. Most, most right now it's uh, SO2, which again, you can see it's in the north of the equator, so that would mean it was in the northern hemispheric circulation pattern. If we just look at this pattern here, typically, um, again, if you're northern hemisphere, you've got these little Hadley cells that pump things from the equator toward the mid-latitudes. Um, versus Tonga was in the southern hemisphere and it pumped things again toward the southern part of the, the mid latitudes of the uh, you know back in two, 2002. So this one's different again so we will have to watch it here for the in the months and year ahead what influence it can have on our uh, year ahead weather outlooks. Look at last week world summer here ending today 20 April here um, 2.9 warmer here in the U.S. than last year warmest in seven fifth warmest in 39 years so much above average national temperatures. 8% um, wetter than last year, so that's the 18th driest, so just a hair below average. Cool spot there in the UK, colds in three years, uh, below average temperatures there. Uh, cool spot down in Australia, again, um, Australia again, uh, slightly below average. But again, we look at these world trends here, number one wettest in over 39 years. So again, we're seeing the influence of the weakening in El Nino and the, um, again, remnants of the moisture that's from the Tonga a couple years ago. Severe weather here this past week was, was relatively active. We added 60 tornadoes this past week, 180, 196 hail events, and 405 wind events. Still trending the below average uh, and below last year levels here for these, but again, I can't stress it enough here. The pattern is, uh, you know, very conducive to a, a major outbreak. Again, obviously, it's uh, random and luck. If uh, it hits a major city, that's a big deal. If a big tornado hits the farm field, it's bad news for the farmer, but uh, doesn't have a huge impact on population and um, you know, infrastructure. So have to watch this over the next uh, couple months because we do think this will be very active uh, in the months ahead. This week, again, weekend, hard to believe the last week of April, 27th of April, um, cool east, again, dramatically cooler here in the east. In fact, we got to watch out for some frost and uh, freezes. In fact, even snow there in uh, farther northern New England. So kind of crazy cold here in the, in the northeast, the east, mid-Atlantic. Um, warm spot there in the central Rockies, uh, into the plains. Overall, the U.S. is 3 degrees warmer than last year, still 17th coolest in 39 years, so below average national temperatures. Look at rainfall, a little bit drier than last year, but still 19th wettest and near average. But notice all that, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4 type inch rainfall from uh, Texas into Des Moines and Iowa and Illinois and Indiana, hard the Corn Belt there. Um, again, this is a severe weather signature for sure. So again, got to watch out for more tornado and uh, wind events. Again, when it's warmer, uh, well, again, when it's cool, we got to watch uh, for hail, but uh, Again, probably more wind and tornadic events. We jump ahead to next week, which I guess is in the first four days of May. Again, week ending for May here. Again, quick uh, fleeting cold pattern uh, will exit the east. And so, again, pretty much a nationwide warm-up. Uh, 6.5 warmer than a year ago, making it the number one warmest in over 39 years the nation. So, again, big warm-up, big change here. Um, this may flip-flop again, though. We may think in early uh, second week of May into mid-May could actually have another cool snap and another frost event uh, potentially in the Midwest, Great Lakes, and parts of the Northeast. So something to watch here as we get into mid-May for a cooler pattern again. Again, another severe weather signature here with uh, heavy rain from Texas to northern Kansas into the heart of the Corn Belt. Uh, so again, this is, uh, again, watch out for tornadoes and uh, severe weather. Again, with warm, we'd be more inclined to think tornadoes and wind as opposed to hail. If we just aggregate these two-week trends here for the 
21 April through 4 May period here. Again, it's a, it's a mixed bag on the East Coast going from cold to warm, but uh, general theme for uh, Canada, North America, U.S. is uh, warmer, uh, cold there in Europe. In fact, this week is just almost downright frigid in parts of, uh, or parts of Europe. Um, so uh, cool and wet is the theme across Europe. So, folks, we hope you have a great week ahead here, and we will talk to you again this time next week. Mm-hmm.